Hey guys, welcome to the second day of VSE Unit Conference, uh, which should have been held in uh, in this uh, beautiful place in Košice, but we are here in this beautiful 3D space in Presho. But never mind, uh, everything else will be working as uh, uh, last year and the year before, and we are going to be talking about uh, issues and uh, and things that uh, you are interested in because uh, it's uh, the conference is especially for you, uh, for people who work in IT, who work in IT business, who run small, medium and uh, large businesses, who help with the uh, technology that uh, these businesses run on. Yesterday uh, with uh, Jim Walsh and uh, Peter Nadj, we spoke about the COVID crisis and how it affected uh, uh, big companies and their IT departments and how it affected the, the, the game development industry. And Peter told us some uh, really interesting things uh, about how how to start a game development studio and Jim gave us a great insight into what they had to be they had to do uh, when the covid uh, arrived and attacked everybody in the not only IT industry and which industries were uh, nearly ran out of the business and which industries it grew and uh, and had success because of corona or thanks to it today the the theme is going to be data big data geolocation and things like that, and how to work and, and um, uh, process the, these huge data data sets which we get from IoT devices or from uh, mobile phones uh, and everything else. But before we start, I would like to thank you. Uh, I would like to thank the people who made all this possible because they didn't say we're we're uh, scratching the whole conference. No, they said let's go uh, let's go on with it. Let's try to do it online. And thanks to them, I am here. You are here in front of the screens, and we are in this beautiful three. Studio. I would like to thank our sponsors. VSA Unit Conference is brought to you by main organizer and partner Východoslovenská Energetika Holding. Partners of the conference, Globologic Slovakia, T-Systems Slovakia, Technical University of Košice, Instarea, Market Locator SK, Games Farm, Grindstone, Game Dev Košice, Media Partners, Marketeris, Techpedia SK, Next Tech, Education SK, Robíme IT, Kam do mesta, ATP Journal. Thank you. As I already mentioned, today we are going to be speaking about big data and, and data. Uh, today also, as yesterday and tomorrow, we are going to have two keynote speeches uh, and then we'll have a panel discussion in the Slovak language uh, where you can also join. Throughout the whole day, throughout the whole two hours, you can join us also via Slido, which you will find uh, on this side of the video. Just click on it, log in uh, with your name or anonymously, anonymously and you can give uh, questions to the speakers to the keynote speakers and after that at around 4.30 you can join the speakers in the chat room so if you prefer to continue in English language you can talk to these two speakers which will be available in the chat room for around 50 minutes uh, for you and you can ask them questions uh, privately or publicly. Uh, First of all, we are going to talk about data. Uh, data which is gathered by mobile phones, which helped a lot during the corona crisis. Uh, I think I read an article that, that uh, the mayor of Bratislava had anonymous access to, to data from mobile phones. And he mentioned that uh, around five to 6,000 uh, Bratislavans went to, uh, for a ski trip into Italy. So they, they, they knew that, that there's like five to 6,000 people coming back, back from Italy. Uh, which was at that time uh, at, the, at its top height uh, with, uh, with the corona, uh, coronavirus virus infections. So uh, they, they knew that they had to prepare some, themselves how, somehow, and they knew that there, there's going to be something happening. And all this uh, could be done just because of data from mobile phones, hopefully anonymous data, uh, and uh, hopefully uh, these data can be used uh, for many, many uh, good causes. There, there, there is also danger, of course but many good uh, use cases uh, exist in the world uh, for data gathered by our mobile phones with GPS and data. Uh, 
All this will be mentioned in the first keynote speak by CEO of Market Locator, uh, Peter Fusek, who is responsible for operations and sales. And uh, right now uh, he's working in Market Locator, which is a company that gathers and works and analyzes uh, mobile phone data uh, in uh, huge data sets. Ladies and gentlemen, Peter Fusek. Hello again, uh, my name is Peter Fusek. Thank you, Jano, for the warm introduction. Uh, today, we are here to discuss how to use the data for the public good, uh, how to use the big data. Uh, I'm uh, the leader of the market locator company who is doing this, uh, uh, and we are believing that the hard data can be really balanced between the privacy and the public good. So let's have a look uh, on that. You know that uh, the Facebook and Google and other uh, big data factories are collecting various data about your uh, network of the contacts, about your ge geolocation for the various reasons. You need uh, Google Maps to navigate you uh, to the destination or you would like to see the updates on your friends' uh, holidays. So why not to use this data in the uh, case of pandemic or the crisis? So that was the question uh, we asked. Uh, to the both Google and Facebook. Finally, they decided to do that. Maybe on the next phase of the corona, we will benefit out of that. So this is something which is obvious uh, available. You just click on your Facebook profile that uh, I am positive and uh, your uh, social uh, social network of the people just receive an alert and it can, it can be fully anonymized. So it means that you just receive the information that somebody from your network is positive. So maybe it's a good idea to test yourself as well. We were looking if such a data are available ready-made already. Uh, so it means that you don't need to wait till Facebook and Google will deploy this solution into the world and the Slovakia especially. So we were trying to have a look on the uh, mobile network operators data because in this time there are more SIM cards than people in the Slovak Republic. So we try to understand uh, how to use those data in the safe way uh, to uh, predict the spreading of the virus. So first of all, it's need to understand which kind of data are available. Previously on the left side uh, in the screen, you can see how my location sees before that it is based only on the so-called call data, record data, which are just following my events as a call, as a message uh, or uh, data, web browsing. Uh, but they are not sufficient, uh, obviously. On the right side, there are the data which are also working for uh, some kind of network updates. It's called signaling or the network traffic data. And you can see this is the picture you would like to you would like to have. So it's uh, easy to understand where, where was what was my position, what was my trajectory, what was my flow of the uh, of the movement. And you have such uh, events in the volumes of hundreds per user per per day so it's good enough uh, it's good enough to to use it this of course is not the uh, as you are watching the csi miami where you can even see the apartment uh, apartment number or the floor number it's not the, not the case but it is good enough if you would like to predict uh, if the positive people are really in, very in touch uh, in terms of several uh, tens of meters, and you can really model, uh, you can really build uh, your mathematical or statistical model over that. So those data are really available right now. Uh, of course, even the government is uh, aware of that. Uh, the prime minister. Uh, of the Slovak Republic, Igor Matovic, was speaking about that really from the first day of the uh, crisis or, or, or of the uh, alert situation in uh, Slovakia because his uh, vice, uh, Veronika Remišová, was really fan of such a data. Unfortunately, not full potential of this data uh, was used in this uh, period. So, I mean, uh, for maybe for the next phase of the COVID or other uh, crises, it can be much better because there are several good reasons to use that. First of all, you, you, you can do the smart quarantine in terms of really monitoring position of a people. Several last days of the, of the uh, crisis was uh, 
Android and iOS application available for that. So it was not the telco data used, but the, the application of uh, Zostan Zdravi of the Slovak Republic. Uh, but you can do even more. You can uh, not only force the smart quarantine, but you can also the predict the virus spreading. So you can see the probability. And if you are doing the calculation over that, you have like millions of events to, uh, to calculate over. And the last thing is uh, you cannot be only the passive. Uh, you can also do the activity about that. So if somebody is really not uh, respecting the quarantine, you can warn him. You can do like the small. Uh, you can do like a small warning just to give him a message or the pop up. But you can also the navigate people and stop spreading the hoax, uh, especially among the senior people or the retired people who are alone at home, they are like missing the information because they are not online uh, population, so they cannot browse it easily. So they can have the full scope of full uh, uh, information from the mass media like television, but they are not really the, the region specific. So if they are like in the, in the lag of local information, it, it is great, like let them know how to call the uh, how to call the doctor locally or how to ask for the help if they need a food delivery, etc. So the government or the municipalities can use those data, not only monitoring those people, but as well try to help them to navigate them and to prevent some spreading false news or hoaxes. Uh, Funny thing is that uh, in Slovakia, we have such a solution for the several years. Three major players are in the single solution. Uh, there is a special alliance uh, which is like enable to have the same view on the data of three major uh, telco play players or mobile network operators. And you can do exactly those tasks uh, which are needed during uh, uh, some, spe some specific period like the crisis is. Uh, you can have the intuitive heat map where you can see really uh, the uh, population statistics. Then you can have a real time updates about specific location if you need to understand who was that in the particular time. And the last point, you can do the SMS alerting. Uh, why I'm pointing this out? Because this is quite a unique situation, not even in the Europe. Not a lot of uh, such solution is worldwide available where you have covered almost uh, the majority of the market or the whole of the market of the SIM card. So it's very, very good to have it. Honestly, it was not fully utilized during the, this crisis. Maybe in the next phase, it will be much better. But I'm really positive on that because we have really several others uh, examples how those data, the big data about the location of the SIM cards uh, anonymized and aggregated are utilized. First of them was uh, the case study where we tried to understand the inbound tourism to the Slovak Republic. Uh, so it means we were scanning for the Ministry of Transportation, who is responsible for the tourism as well. We were scanning all those people who are coming from abroad, foreign people who were visiting the Slovakia for a whole year. And we tried to understand where they entered the Slovakia, how long does they stay in, in specific regions, uh, what was the exit point, just to modulate uh, just to do a calculation and to predict uh, the uh, what are the specific region, what are the specific months where it is uh, specific people from specific country visiting Slovakia. It is really important if you are setting up the international marketing uh, of the of the Slovakia uh, as a country, and you can really target it to the specific countries or regions in the world based on those data. So just some facts uh, we were like having six million visitors which is much more which is more than the active people here in the slovakia so it's uh, even in the such a small country as we are the uh, with the tourism which is not really fully developed uh, we attract 116 countries to visit uh, the slovakia in single single year so it's really nice and you can see for example the russia uh, you can see on the uh, right on, on the middle of the on the middle of the screen. Then uh, Russia loves really high Tatra peaks. You can see there is a lot of them uh, pe uh, during all year, or they are loving our spas in Pieščany. For example, the Americans uh, just visit the capital city and in the embassy, I guess. So uh, this is like a, uh, some statistic out of this study. Uh, we we can have those uh, data uh, as a extra to the data sets which are collecting in the states already. 
statistical bureau is correcting overnight stays in the hotels, but you are missing data from the Airbnbs. So this is like the way how to add such a data, such a 21st century or the modern uh, data to the facts we already already have. You can see it's correlated strongly. And from the map on the left side, you can see the majority of the tourists really visits, unfortunately, just the best part of the Slovakia. There are some blind spots which need to be need to be developed still in the way of the tourism. The, the, another uh, pioneer in the way of using big data is the transportation. Uh, specifically, it was uh, focused on the Bratislava and Trnava districts on the west part of the Slovakia, where the public transportation need those data to understand uh, to understand how to set up the uh, public transportation, plus to motivate commuting people to use preferably public transportation in favor of the individual like cars, etc., like to be more eco. So we provide them by the measurement uh, how it is look like and they, they act based on that and they reset up the trains, buses and uh, etc. Uh, just some uh, information from that study, uh, the majority of those people who, are, who were commuting in this west part of Slo Slovakia are commuting to the mm, capital city, to the Bratislava, obviously, uh, uh, which is like blue part. Uh, the yellow part is commuting mainly to the Trnava, which is a uh, uh, capital city or a major main city in the district of Trnava. Uh, but it is not like only the Bratislava has a gravity, uh, even the Trnava has it uh, and more than 10,000 people are daily commuting from Bratislava to Trnava. I guess it's uh, for the uh, for the uh, factory, car making factory, which is based nearby Trnava. So even the Bratislava is going to Trnava as well. Third, uh, the last one so far uh, was the case study which were focused on the city rhythm. So before we were talking about the tourism, about the commuting or transportation, now we try to understand how the micro, uh, micro regions of the capital city uh, are populating during a day, uh, during a various time slots, and who is really using such an infrastructure. So if it is a local people who are like living and working in the Bratislava or is rather somebody who is staying just during the day and overnight he's uh, coming back home outside of Bratislava or is th those guys who are living uh, on, in other part of Slovakia and they are going for the uh, work week to have a job in Bratislava. And we try to figure out uh, how to how this uh, infrastructure, I mean roads, uh, et cetera, are utilized and uh, this thing between th those who are just uh, traveling or and those who are uh, really living here and like uh, paying for the infrastructure as well some nice uh, pictures and some videos you can see on the left side that uh, this is like the day rhythm of the bratislava time means the uh, this is like eight hours at the morning nine etc and you can see how the city is uh, fulfilled by the people who are coming there to have a job, this is like the night uh, period. On the right side, you can see uh, blue colored so-called bedrooms. It means the areas where the majority of uh, majority of uh, uh, people are staying overnight. So it means that uh, the they they have their cell phones with them uh, during the night period. Uh, the red parts are the offices. So it means that people are going there to work. I will just stop here for a minute to explain better how we do that. Uh, we, we are having a long-term view on the data coming from the position of cell phone to the mobile network operator. We are not using any application or uh, any other technology than GSM because the cell phone is uh, automatically locked to the network and uh, if you would like to be reachable to your friends and if somebody need to call you the network must know where you are present just to route the call directly to your cell phone in your hands so that's the way how we are knowing the position of uh, such a such a mobile uh, uh, phone and we are doing the several calculation over that. First of all, uh, the, it's always anonymized and aggregated. It means nobody is like interested in your personal data. They are fully, uh, fully removed before any kind of processing. Then it is aggregated. It means that we are, uh, we try to have the uh, 
some privacy protection, extra privacy protection that we are looking for just for the man in the specific uh, age. So we are not interested if it is Peter Fusek born in that, that place having this uh, age. We are just having the need to understand if it is segment of uh, people between 40 and 50, uh, male, living in Bratislava. And doesn't matter if it is one or 10 such a people, we, we would like to understand this bunch of the, or the segment of the people. So we put all those similar guys together, if you would like to uh, to visualize uh, visualize it, which is very fine with the purpose. We we are not here, we are not the police, we are not tracking the individuals, we are just uh, would like to show the trends uh, in the population. And based on that, we are like highlighting where is the majority or most such uh, SIM cards uh, present in line with the GDPR. And if you are talking about the night or sleeping location, we are looking what is the place where the staying the majority of the last days uh, uh, and which kind of BTS, it means the uh, antenna or place in the network of mobile operator is used. Of course, because sometimes you are staying abroad or you are going to holidays or visit parents, etc. Very same story with the working location. Typically, you are staying at your uh, at your office. It was true before the corona. So I will just remark here that we need to adjust the algorithms because these days a lot of people have home offices. So it's hard to distinguish what is your uh, place where you are going to work and where you are going just to home. So now we are like uh, figuring out how to handle home offices because situation has changed rapidly, specifically in Slovak Republic, where a lot of people are staying right now at the home offices. So this was the uh, the number three case study, which we prepared for the Bratislava as a capital city. It was paid from European Union funds uh, from Ministry of Economy. Okay, so this uh, study was really uh, focused mainly on the Bratislava because it was a pilot. Of course, Bratislava is very, very interested uh, as a uh, point to study because it's capital city, so a lot of traffic there. But it is not uh, fully locked to Bratislava. I mean, we built up the methodology and it was part of the project, which is open source and which is ready to be used for any part of the Slovakia and not only Slovakia. So uh, specifically if Košice, Prešov or any other city, need to make some important decision and the hard data is missing, it's good to use this methodology and maybe discuss with the mobile network operators or ask uh, how to fulfill the models with the data because uh, you can have similar map uh, of uh, Košice or the Prešov uh, ready-made. Uh, ready-made means that, of course, you need the time to collect that data, but it is not taking uh, ages to collect it because uh, I will come back to that later, how we are collecting those data. Uh, but it's really much more faster than if you're having, uh, if you're having just the students and they are making marks some of people who are passing some spot. Uh, so good news is that this pilot project enable all other cities, not only in Slovakia, to use the similar uh, methodology, which is like not strictly linked to Slovak uh, environment. It means that any part or any other standard mobile operator's data uh, can be used. So if you are like uh, watching us from abroad and you would like to use it in Austria, Czech Republic, or whenever across the Europe, uh, just have a look on that methodology or uh, we can discuss on later how to accommodate it for your purpose. Uh, I was speaking about the measurement. I partially touched the point that uh, how the data are collected, but I would like to uh, stress out the uh, the size or how it is robust, how it is like uh, how many information are available for such a measurement. So let's imagine this was the case of that case number two, which was focused on the public uh, transportation. And we we are we, we were doing 14 days, so it means two weeks uh, measurement, and we were measuring on 15,000 uh, points uh, on the map. So you can have a parallel that if you would like to do the same, you will, you need to have a 15,000 students who are taking the marks, uh, how many of the people around them were present. Uh, so this is like a 15,000 uh, in the two only two districts of the Slovakia. And we collect more than 640 million events. So you have like 100 millions of the events uh, or the sticks in, in your measurement available. So it's really, you can 
understand how big is it and uh, how how much data you have. So uh, it's really the precision is really very very high and. 2.1 million uh, of respondents were uh, participating in this uh, in this measurement. So we were not bothering anybody. We don't need to stop such a person and ask uh, questions or call him or whatever. We were just using the anonymized and aggregated data coming from the mobile network operators and uh, uh, collect them together without uh, without any any contact with the end user. Of course, it's still GDPR compliant. We were only scanning those people who who has a, such a content or there was a, such a legal uh, legal uh, ground uh, for doing that so and three free mobile network operators so mainly all available sim cards uh, were uh, were uh, included so this is like really huge if you are doing a research and it's not any any costly than the regular research you do if you are having like a field and somebody is like collecting the data on, on on the street. So good news is it's it's a new technology. Its scale is really two levels up than you used before, and it is not costly and it is not uh, taking more more time. And the quality is much much higher. Uh, why such a data can be used? Uh, because we were just presenting three different use cases. Uh, just to make a public or academy or government understand the usage of a such, such a data. And we were not talking about the crisis you see before. So it was like regular situation which where you are uh, uh, when you need to develop a city or the you know, traffic or transport infrastructure. Uh, and there is much more. There is a lot of discussion right now because the mobility of uh, not only Slovaks, but uh, uh, as well the others is uh, like increasing rapidly. So you need to understand if you are paying a taxes on the governmental level, which is case, which is case in Slovakia, you need to reallocate those money into the regions. And there is a lot of discussion about that, uh, how to do that, uh, what is the fair uh, algorithm, and all of them are rather static. So you you just take the money and you have some uh, metrics and you decide like 15% is going there, 20% is going there based on uh, some uh, some data but we are talking about here about the dynamic allocation so now we can easily understand which roads are you using which infrastructure like the kindergarten hospitals like roads is uh, is used by particular person and we can allocate his taxes dynamically to that specific region to the specific time which is much more fair this is just for the illustration is not not necessarily to be a major allocation key but this is the way how to move forward in the discussion how to allocate the central taxes to the local local regions what is coming right now and it can be like first uh, moment or, or first uh, even where, where to try that, the Statistical Bureau of the Slovak Republic is doing every 10 years the census, like the population census of the uh, whole Slovak Republic uh, with the focus on the population and, and on the housing. We tried several times to, uh, to uh, teach the Statistical Bureau during the workshops or other ways to use those data and we feel that is specific time because 2021 is coming uh, the the new way of this 10 year period and we would like to use those data for the enhancement of the measurement made on the classic ballot proof uh, statistical method using the forms which are populated uh, filled in with the uh, with the respondent and we would like to enhance it with with those data from the coming from the sim cards and it's not necessary is just the sim cards we are talking about the new data so we are living in 21st century and it's very very important to use the modern, the new data which were not available before. I'm speaking about the analysis of the shopping cart, uh, telco, mobile data, or even app data, apps data. I mean, a lot of us has uh, applications which are collecting those data full time. It's draining our battery, so let's make some good of, out of that. Specifically, uh, I'm talking about the COVID-19 Zostein Zdravi app, which is like governmental app for the smart quarantine. And a lot of people has voluntarily installed the app just to be aware if somebody passing him uh, is uh, was positive and he needs to be so he or she needs to be uh, tested as well so and all those data are in so are they are anonymized uh, maybe they can be collected and used to 
uh, enhance the uh, the just the data we already had before. Why to do that right now? Because now is ten years a period, so we will need to wait another ten years if we would like to have uh, the, this opportunity again. So we are having the chance to calculate uh, at the same time data from uh, new modern data sources like mobile network operators, mobile. Uh, apps versus uh, the classical forms which are collected by by the respondents uh, in the in the field so i believe that uh, statistical bureau will not miss that chance uh, we are really ready help here i mean not only us because the covid uh, times were good that a lot of analysts i mean the healthcare analysts financial analysts in the government were ready to build up the models and they are, they are now open to use those data I mean, we have a legislation which enables all those guys to use this data during the crisis times. So I believe once the crisis is over, uh, it will become a discussion how to uh, even use those data for the other use cases than uh, the, the fighting the pandemic only. W reason how we would like to help this process oh, is clear. So these data are on the table, it's time to use them. So we do. We did an extra step. We prepare a web page where all those governmental, academy, and municipalities can find all these, all these uh, uh, use cases which we made. So they can find the methodology. They can find the selected outputs. Of course, not the source data or not nothing, which is like uh, protected by the law or by the commercial contracts, but you can have it as a manual as a step-by-step -step process if you would like to do such analysis by yourself first way second we are like uh, having a strong relationship or cooperation with the geographs on uh, university of Comenius here in the bratislava and uh, they are part of our team uh, some of them as an internal some of them as a uh, as a uh, academy as externals and all of them are like trying to uh, teach the market or trying to uh, prepare a documents and all of them are focusing in this page. So if you need any kind of articles, methodologies, or even the car in the current uh, uh, media, current media, you can easily find them here. And if you need any more data, it's here. And it was built to enable the, not only the statistical bureau, but as well the government, I mean, uh, if you are talking about the informatization of the Slovak Republic uh, or the municipalities, if you are talking about the hard data uh, decision making. So this is this is it uh, and it's public, it's open, so let's uh, utilize it. Uh, if you need to contact me, I will be available uh, in the following Q&A session, so I will be more than happy to answer your questions. And then uh, I will be able to chat with you. So if you need to, uh, to discuss some particular individual questions, I'm, I'm more than happy to do that. So I would like to thank you for uh, for having a good time with me or hoping to having a good time with me and uh, happy to answer your questions right now. So thank you very much. Thank you. That was uh, Peter Fusek, who explained uh, much more than I wanted to know about data localization. And uh, he's uh, with us here. Hello, Peter. Hello. Hi, hi. Hi, how are you? Everything good? Um, I'm, I'm OK. But I'm ready to answer the question. So hopefully, you have some for me. Yes, we do. I, I, and uh, actually, I have a question because uh, you have a lot of data from mobile phones, and you mentioned that uh, there's uh, a lot more data which could be used from from mobile apps, from shopping, uh, from uh, how you how you behave on on I don't know Alza, AliExpress, anywhere on the what, what do you pay mm -hmm. uh, for with the Google Pay? So you say you can overlay these data with with your location. Like, can you can you can you do these things? Like, I have. And other data sets uh, from from these apps, and I can can I combine them with uh, with data you collect from GSM network? Uh, yeah, uh, uh, it was a bit hard to read you or to understand you, but I tried to answer that. So 
Your question was regarding the other data set. If there are yes, if I can combine this data with with uh, with your data. Yeah, uh, it's important to understand the combining is not the right way. You have to comply with a lot of regula regulations here, but you can use the same data in uh, in the way like we use the telco data. So the methodology is ready made. If you have the Wi-Fi data coming from the public Wi-Fi networks, or you have some data from the apps, like you mentioned, from the stores, or you have the payment data coming from the Apple or, or other data sources, you can process them in the very same way. And you have the inside, so you, you you will have the like the layers on the map. First layer will be where the people are living. The second layer will be how the people are spending their money. What are the hotspots where they are opening their wallets to, to do the shopping? And many more layers can be combined. This is a combination maybe you would like to see. So you can easily identify those white spots in the Slovak maps or whatever map where the people are living, but there is no the huge spending because there is a problem with the unemployment or some social issues, etc. Mm -hmm. So you can find find the, this data useful if you would like to analyze some other some other than the COVID nineteen uh, issues. And do you have some clients, your personal, your company, who take data from you and they have their own data sets uh, from maybe their app and uh, or, or their customers and they, they com they're able to combine these data? Uh, yeah, we do have a customers who are using the data coming from anonymized and aggregated mm -hmm. uh, telco networks, but they are not combining it directly. The, I mean, it will be not compliant if you would like just combine those data without having a consent with the end users. Mm -hmm. So they are rather to have this data as a additional data to, to the internal CRM data or to the internal shopping traffic data. And they are just trying to have a look on the similar segments in both data sets. So you cannot just very straightforward or easily combine it. It will be not illegal. But there are the techniques how to modulate the similar segments and check them. I mean, check internal data of such a companies of <coughs> our customers versus the external data coming from the mobile network operators. Mm -hmm. Uh, we have a question from uh, one of our viewers. Uh, is there a way, um, uh, I don't see the question, uh, is there a way to communicate the mobile data collection we use during the crisis so that the public will not be scared of losing their privacy? So um, the question is probably about, uh, can you tell us that it's really safe and that it's really anonymized because uh, sometimes uh, some people don't believe that? Yeah, yeah. I mean, there were a lot of uh, rumors uh, during the COVID crisis how this data will be used for the tracking individuals and to be misused for uh, any other than just the uh, fighting COVID uh, purposes. Uh, but in fact, it's not the true. I mean, it's highly regulated uh, industry. I mean, the telco and there is a lot of um, governmental agencies who are overwatching this uh, data uh, processing. And even the mobile network operators are uh, very very strict in this uh, data protection topic. So I would like just to once again mention that those data are not, though they, those data are not uh, having the detailed personal information and, and they are before any processing, they're anonymized and aggregated. So there is no, you don't need to have a worries that those data can be misused or somebody else will draw, drill down the data and check you as an individual. Of course, I cannot tell what exactly the government and operators exchanged during the crisis because it was not going through our company. Uh, but I believe they, they, they are really aware of such a, a unique data uh, data situation. So they don't want to they don't want to lose this opportunity. So I, I, I think and I believe strongly believe they, they will be really respond they, they was and they will be really responsible in this data data handling. So once again, still you do you still believe yeah. that after yesterday, what happened in NASA? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I, uh, that nobody you know, else is watching is, that data? <laughs> everybody is watching. I know you already give up your data, Jan, me and you together. If you are using the Gmail, uh, the, G the Google or the Alphabet is reading already your uh, bank account statement, your private conversation with your friends, etc. because you, you just exchange it for the free service. Mm -hmm. And very same story, if, if you would like to have a good infrastructure, good railroads and uh, the, I don't know, placement of the schools and hospitals, you need to give up 
part of your privacy in the same way because we need those data or somebody who is doing the planning. I mean, how, how can he know that uh, where the most of the people, majority of the people need to have a hospital or the, or the uh, primary school? So those data are really needed. You are right on that. That must be like in very safe way. So the NASA's and others are not helping that right now. Mm -hmm. Um, okay, uh, next question from our viewer. Uh, he wants to thank you for the insightful presentation. And he wants to know what lessons did you learn from the COVID crisis and what data collection uh, uh, systems or, or, or methods are you developing now? What's, what's, what's going to be next? Okay, uh, one thing I already mentioned <laughs> during my presentation that now uh, uh, everything has shifted and it has changed. So you're no longer staying in your office uh, during the uh, work hours. So it's hard to say what is your employer right now. So you are staying at home if you are at the home office. So we need to definitely adjust the algorithms which are trying to predict what is your office address or work address and what, what is your sleeping address. This is like one of the issues. And second one, the lot of traffic disappear. So I mean, the movement of the people, cars and everything just stopped during the lockdown or during the restrictive uh, period. Now we would like to see if it is if it recovers or not. Now it seems it's not recovering yet. Of course, it's much better than before. So you are kind of losing part of the information. So it is very hard during the this shock uh, period or sh specific period. Uh, to do the prediction. So you have to, for example, ex uh, uh, exclude this period from all your statistical models because mm -hmm. you will have the bias in that. So this is like two major things like the uh, movement or the mobility of the people has changed and you have like to exclude this specific period from the long-term prediction. So this is like mm -hmm. two major, major learnings. Uh, what's going to be new? Well, do you have anything in your pocket that you're uh, developing and something, something you didn't mention, uh, something that the future will bring? Yeah, I hope so. The, I'm happy that it, it became a uh, population-wide topic. I mean, this mobile mm -hmm. tracking or cell phone tracking right now is a topic. So the people are aware that, of course, some part of them are scared, like the big brother is watching them. Uh, they, they need to they need to live with that and they need to understand that on not big brother is there is a gmail facebook and others who are already mm -hmm. watching them even the weather application in cell phone is watching them so i'm i'm believe I, i'm believer of that that it is it will help to speed it up so so far we were trying in the last four years to educate the market now it's like having a huge tempo so i believe that much more of such a studies will uh, will be on the on the table of course these studies are not all of them for free, so uh, I'm right, quite not sure if the companies now have the, uh, the attention about the big data. I'm not sure if they will have a budget for that because this mm -hmm. is like not necessary things to have during uh, the problematic uh, period. Mm -hmm. uh, and from the uh, features perspective, maybe, sorry, uh, just to finish the idea about the, what, what's new, uh, we try to we try to adapt to the new situation that you don't need to target or segment people just based on the location, but you uh, you need to understand much more the other behavior. This this is mm -hmm. what's uh, going to be introduced soon. Okay, um, I'm another viewer asks. I'm always surprised and a bit upset when I get direct SMS advertising message. Who is uh, who is writing it and why? Uh, why? How are you dealing with that? Yeah, uh, first of all, there is a GDPR law in place. All uh, all SMSs which you're receiving must comply with that. So once you receive the SMS, you have to check who is the sender and uh, somehow the rest of the dispute with him uh, from which uh, consent or based on which consent he's sending it to you. If you are talking about the solution from the mobile network operator, they have your consent during your phase when you enter into the contract with them. I must. Uh, highlight or um, tell that this was like the, the this was marketing SMS I guess what the uh, what the um, what was the question about but during the COVID period we were enabling the local majors of the series also preferably smaller series they don't have a way how to uh, reach uh, the senior people who are uh, mm -hmm. or the retired people who are living <coughs> in their village and they, they spread out the information uses this solution for free during the COVID period and they try to uh, uh, get them help with the food with the healthcare, with the just with to, to, to have somebody to talk with because they were locked down in their homes at their homes and they were not able to go to have the proper information you can imagine mm -hmm. that 70 years old uh, lady or 
gentleman uh, cannot re is not really online uh, online person so he cannot browse the web easily and he cannot distinguish between the serious information and he cannot browse for the local one so he needs mm -hmm. just to receive the number via the sms because he don't know how to use the whatsapp or the messenger he just need to open the sms and read please call this number your major and that's mm -hmm. it so it is, can be used not only for the marketing for for these purposes in this case that somebody is using or sending this information has the gdpr consents and it's the major of the city mm -hmm. okay uh another question how i can i how can i avoid to be monitored uh, shut off the phone remove the sim card <laughs> yeah it's uh First of all, I would like to ask one more uh, time that this is not, you are not monitor, nobody is uh, really watching you as a person, so please try to think again. If you are uh, really uh, not a fan of this and you don't want to help uh, for the bigger thing uh, with your personal data, you have to go to your mobile network operator and deal with that. I'm afraid but that you have to switch off the phone and log out from the network anyhow, because uh, then you are just logging into the network and mobile operator is aware about your uh, position, about not your position in terms of meters, but about the antenna, about the point when you are entering, where you are communicating with the network, I mean your cell phone with the, with the wireless antenna. Uh, Oh, in the network, so I don't, I, I don't have a good answer on that. Uh, <laughs> please, refing again if you are not really wishing to help uh, to the bigger thing. Um, I think Marian Kochner didn't want to help the bigger thing, and then, <laughs> <laughs> then uh, they, but yeah, they thanks helped themselves. God he didn't. <laughs> yeah, they, yeah, they, they uh, had yeah, a pretty I, bad plan. Even the even the guys who went to check out the place and they just turn on their phones <laughs> when they are checking the place, and then they turn them off. And that is like really really crazy oh, wow. that you just yeah. the phone goes on around the place and then it goes off. Okay, one more question. Uh, that this conference was not before. I mean, maybe <laughs> yeah. the old guy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so thanks for yeah. their like lockdown already. Yeah. Um, hello, Peter. Great keynote. Thank you. Uh, I'd like to know how is in, how invisible I can I be on if it's even either possible to be under the radar today. Another one. Sure. Possible. You just use the aluminium foil over your mm -hmm. head. Mm -hmm. uh, you are uh, nobody scanning your brain then. Mm -hmm. So not easy, not easily, because all of us would like to benefit out of um, being online. So you won't like to chat with your friends. So you are anyhow, if you switch off from the mobile phone operator or a mobile network provider, you are on the Wi-Fi. So even your mm -hmm. cable internet provider knows that you are connecting connected somehow. So of course you are the one who is paying the bill. So it's not so mm -hmm. big issue to identify you. So I think if, if either you go fully offline and you use the aluminum foil over your head that nobody's scanning from uh, from the other planet, your uh, thoughts, or you are online and you have to accept it. And uh, so far, uh, I, I mean, uh, you need to understand that you are the people million. It means there is a million others like you. And if you are not doing anything suspicious, uh, I don't see the point that somebody is really trying to track you down, watch or misuse your data. Yesterday we had a guest here in a panel discussion who says that freedom and liberty is also about being able to doing uh, suspicious things. So, <laughs> so I have a, I, but I have a recommendation. I, I with my friends we googled and there is uh, the devices to set up a mesh network, which you connect yeah. somewhere to the internet where, where you believe that it's it's okay, and and then you put it on your houses and and you can cover pretty big area with. 10, 20 devices which cost around 150 euros and, and build your own uh, mesh uh, Wi-Fi and use uh, VPN over that and, and uh, you should be safer. But it's expensive yeah. and you need some technology knowledge and it's, and it's not that uh, easy uh, to... And you need to rethink the purpose if you really yeah, yeah. need that uh, kind mm -hmm. of security. One thing is to be being <laughs> curious about something. Second thing is doing something you don't want other to discover it and you have to mm -hmm. have a reason. So it's up to you. And uh, last question, uh, Peter, thanks for the presentation. Uh, what would data collection look like if the virus came five years ago? How prepared were we compared to present day? You know, we started five years ago mm -hmm. uh, with the one of the mobile network operators. I mean, the situation was uh, very same five years ago. All those data were somehow present, uh, not in very good shape, let's call it, because there were no kind of real usage. So. From the data perspective, the very same data 
are somehow available. Right now, the situation is changed because technology shift enables the mobile network operators to use those data much more faster or um, uh, to, to do the things which were not technically um, possible before. So from the data perspective, same data, but now you have the tools and we are providing one of them, which are able to utilize those data that even the business person or the analyst is able to play with them directly without any IT skills or very expensive pre-processing, etc. So this, mm -hmm. this, this has changed. Technology is much faster and cheaper than Okay, thank you very much, Peter. That was the last question which we had. Uh, it was really nice having you here uh, in our, I think you're in our studio in Bratislava, right? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> yes, okay, so we're happy that, that uh, we're using that studio too. Uh, thank you for the insightful information and uh, all the viewers can meet you in a couple of minutes. I think it's 4.30 at the online chat, which is right next to this screen. Uh, you just sw uh, switch it with the Slido and just connect and you ask uh, Peter private or public questions if you want. Peter, thank you very much. Thank you very much and have a nice day, Jan. Bye-bye.